Hi, this is Craig at Creative Text, and today I want to do a tutorial really quickly on what I think is the most useful feature in Adobe Photoshop CS2, and I think it's something a lot of designers haven't really played with yet. It's called Smart Objects, and I think it is just going to revolutionize the way people use Photoshop. So let's say that you're designing a layout, and very often when I'm creating in Photoshop, I don't really know where I'm going in the end. So as I'm moving, a lot of times I will grab elements, so I'm going to grab, say, this iMac, and I'm going to do a transform, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I don't really know where I'm going to put it. Maybe I'm going to put it up here in the, you know, just don't know yet. The problem is, if you don't know where you're going, and you go and want to make this thing bigger again, by transforming it small, you've destroyed and thrown out all this resolution. I mean, just look how jagged that looks. So, that's where Smart Objects comes in. So first, point, let me throw away this iMac. It's pretty much trashed at this point. Now, let's say instead I want to take my little Mac Mini here, I'm going to select it, the layer is selected right there. I'm going to go to the Layer menu, pull down to Smart Objects, Group into New Smart Object. Now the icon changes a little bit on the layer palette, it's got a little icon right here. The magic thing, thing about Smart Objects is now, we, when we transform this, we are not actually changing the resolution of the original placed graphic. So I make it nice and small, move it up here, and if I double click on this Smart Object right here, get a little error, a little, a little warning, we still got the full resolution right here, and it's attached in that smart object. And all we're doing when we're resizing this thing is resizing how it looks on the page. Now I can go even a little bit further than this. I can go ahead and duplicate this layer. So now we've got two of these. And I'm going to, well, I don't want to do that, but let's say we want to rotate, put it down here, maybe make it a little bit smaller, take this one down here, and then let me grab this G5 and... Um, I'm going to make a smart object out of the G5. Same thing. Now, as I'm going through and working on this project again, if I want to make a change to the way this Mac Mini looks, all I have to do is double click on one of my smart object elements. So I'm going to double click on this. We get a little dialog box saying that we are about to commit changes to the, to the original image. And now, in here, I could do things like adjust the color balance. So I can go into color balance, and this. let's say that I want to make this kind of a uh, purplish color. And when I click Apply, when I save this, it actually is saving in both of these elements, because remember, we just duplicated that one smart object. I can now move this thing all over the place, do anything I want, and they are linked together. I could make another duplicate of this, drag it over here, rotate it the other way, and again, as I'm doing all this, I am not actually making any changes to the original image. Again, with my G5, I could transform this, rotate it, and again, nothing is happening to the original image. It's giving me the maximum resolution in my finished project as it can based on the placed image that we originally created a smart object out of. We can even go as far. I'm going to select this one again. I can, for example, go under Edit, pull down to Transform, go to Warp, and this is where it gets really cool. I can actually manipulate this smart object version of my little Mac Mini. Let's say I want to make it kind of a weird distorted image. Using the warp command in CS2. And as I've done this, it is still working from the original pixels from all these same smart objects. I go in here and edit my original smart object, and let's say I want to change, uh, let's say I don't want to change the color. Let's say I actually want to do something really wrong. I want to kind of draw something in here. It doesn't really matter what I'm going to do. If I apply that, it applies it on everything. I undid it. I didn't really want it to look like that. But, in any rate, play with this. Smart objects are really cool. This may be just the tip of the iceberg for you, but it really changes what you can do in Photoshop and how you do it.